How's it going, guys? Dom here with Dom's Vlogs. <laughs> Disney. Man, it's one of the biggest kind of like, I say animation giants, so to speak. Not only is Disney, how do I say, pretty much has done the animation, like, they're basically the animation gods of animation. Let's just say that. I'm, I'm just saying that they've done this for almost, almost 80 years starting with the big bright mouse and then started with two old Disney princesses, how can you not botch any of this up in the way Disney has done? Well, had Disney had made such timeless classics. Well, let's just say the new Disney formula is not working correctly. So yeah, the Disney formula... We all know that the Disney formula itself is nothing more than the, just a tad piece of garbage in the modern day here. And as evident, I've seen a lot of people mock the Disney formula. And even for some people that have box records, as a matter of fact, I think I have those on my phone. So here's, so here's my phone here. Let's, uh, let me type in my secret code. And let's take a look at the Disney formulas. Let's look at their latest films. Let's look at... Um, what should we look at? Oh, let's look at, uh, let's look at that one that actually was made, I think, 50 to 40 years. Yes, we know. Go away. Uh, I'm sorry. Just some stupid message. Messenger from my little landlord. As a matter of fact, no. It's not a landlord. It's just an asshole. Alright. So let's take a look at Mary Poppins Returns. And let's see the critical appraise on that one. So, so for the Disney formula, we'll explain it sooner or later, but let's look at the views on, on one of the movies that had the Disney formula, which is Mary Poppins Returns. So, IMDb ratings give it a 6.9. Really? I give it a 4.3. Maybe a 3.3. 79% on the Rotten Tomatoes section. I give it... Uh, let's just say it, a 30. And Facebook gives this thing a 4.7 out of 5. Really, Facebook? Because it doesn't feel that appealing to me. I'd rather get this thing a 1.5. 85% of people like this movie, I am not one of them. Let's give, a, let's give an accurate reason. It's got, it's got not a lot of good things about it. It's got almost nothing to do with the original Mary Poppins story. And not only that, it's pretty much one basic shithole. Deleted scenes, interesting finds. I'm just looking at this because, you know, I know a lot of people do this. At least look at what's going on. I mean, it's a musical fantasy, yet screenplayed by people that have, have never even seen a Mary Poppins movie. Mary Poppins Returns is a mostly charmless venture at the modest update of the 1860 of the 1964 film. Why did I say it's 1864? I have no idea. One that has brushed off the story, making it louder, harsher, and more aggressively smiley. Yeah, pretty much the worst modest update I've seen in the world. Yeah, uh, let's think about it here. I call that incorrect. These are critic-like views. Um, not much on it. Disney says Mary Poppins Returns, an all-new sequel with a fresh sensibility that celeb that celeb celebrates the spirit of the original. I call that incorrect. I call it more of an insult to the original. Let's see. And I think that's basically it. Um, there's not much for the critics here. Wait, RogerEbert.com. Oh, <laughs> Roger Ebert's. It's the RogerEbert.com. It's one of the critics, even though he passed away. Rest in peace, Roger Ebert. Um, Mary Poppins Returns falls quite short of being 
particularly perfect in every way. And I can completely agree on that one. That deserves a star. Oh shit, I can't do the star thing? Whatever. It's so creepy because their latest edition that is the shittiest I've seen into this date, which is Beauty and the Beast, is got a 71% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 7.2 out of 10 of INDB, and 90% of people like it. I'm still a disliked fan of it. Oh, you're saying, oh, I hate new things. Listen, listen, guys. Listen, 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 listen. I don't hate new things. I just hate stupid and annoying things. I hate horrible things. I like to see new things in movies. But I really don't like how much people flat out just say, oh, it's so good because it looks just like the original. It doesn't. If it looked like the original, it should be like the original. Have you seen the original movie? Now, technically, yes, I shouldn't criticize this movie as much with the Disney formula because I've never seen Mary Poppins Returns and never seen the original Mary Poppins. But I could tell you, by one critic point of view, and I mean one critic only, I've seen cutscenes of the original and the remake, and let's be honest, the first rehab is nothing more than just talking, exposition, and just some bad guy. It's just not the way we put it. The musical score is obnoxious, and I cannot explain why. The ones that get flack, which I don't know why it gets flack, are the actual songs of the movie, which are duplicates of the original. Which is fine with me. Those songs are actually pretty good to listen to. They actually have a good musical store. And the actors are not that bad. Certainly the director was lousy enough to actually go on a sandwich break. Let's get, let's get more straight into it here. In that Mary Poppins is an original classic 1964 Disney version with two polar opposites that wanted to create an imaginative storytelling by challenging your inner child, but also your inner adult which combines that together in such a nice category. This went too childish. And you can't be like that with Mary Poppins, which is strange enough. Which begs me the question is, what's the point of this new Disney formula? Well, let's get to the categories of the Disney formula, which I am going to roast upon because Disney shouldn't be taking notes on this for their next two movies, Toy Story 4 and Frozen 2, which are going to be coming out. Toy Story 4 is coming out, I think, in the summer, and then this fall is going to be coming Frozen 2. So, let's talk about the Disney formula. So, as a technical note, it's nothing more than just an unimaginative storytelling, which is kind of like what we would expect. If it was supposed to be like, like again, like I said with Mary Poppins Returns, it should be a very classic part by still keeping it part of the original like story of Mary Poppins. It should not change it to just have a villain in this and have action scenes. The action scenes were basically into the mental state of the person, not physical, but they changed that so it went physical. And that's kind of like what you don't want to do with Mary Poppins. And Mary Poppins is not meant to be tread lightly as something violent because it's pretty much just so strange to have it violent. Because I would never take Mary Poppins for granted as violent for Disney. Yes, Disney has gone through harsh elements, and especially between death and living itself, and especially the devil. But we have changed now, and technology has grown so largely over the years, that with this, they have to... F and here's the thing here. Yes, Mary Poppins is a timeless treasure, and she is from the 60s. Mary Poppins, I mean, returns, is not from an age where cell phones exist yet. Hell, the first cell phone wasn't invented, I think, until, what, the 80s? And Mary Poppins returns is supposed to be flat out, kind of like copying that type of art gallery. What's next? Mary Poppins is just going to have a damn tablet in her pocketbook? On top of also not using her magic umbrella correctly, not using, like, the stage plays that they create for these songs, and not letting them move stuff and create an interesting vibe behind it to make it more like Disney, it's, it's just nothing. 
It makes Walt feel like he's rolling in his grave so many times. He's like, damn, can I get out of my grave so I can just slap these people right now? Because clearly, if Walt can hear me right now in heaven, I think he can agree with me. This is a complete insult to his original classics. And there are some original classics that were after his death. They've already ruined two classics already. Well, they did, they did the other one too many times. And then the other one is going to be having its own sequel, in my opinion, is not going to be anywhere as good as anything else. If it's going to tackle any type of moment, anything close to the original type of style of Maleficent, then be happy for it, for its live action part. But it's still nothing good. It's just something for you to get a quick buck on, and this formula has even, I think, so even though I've never been knowing what it's called plot points, but I think in my mind, it has something to do about a recycled point in a plot that has been done to death so many times. The plot points are so recycled in this lazy, good-for-nothing script that you just want to take the... Eiffel Tower right here and jab it into somebody's eye to let them wake up. Because that's literally how it feels. On top of that, the storytellings don't make any sense. Now, let's go to Beauty and the Beast back again. And don't worry, I'll be deleting these titles from my phone soon. Because it definitely needs a cleansing. Definitely needs spiritual guidance for all I care. But let's go back to Beauty and the Beast. The 2017... Is it 2017 reboot? I am not sure. But let's just say it's the Beauty and the Beast reboot. It had pretty much talking and also pretty much just a bitch-like beast. It was a beast that was a bitch. On top of that too, um, one of the actors cannot sing. And yet she's from Harry Potter. Charming. So, that's a problem. The dress is horrible. It doesn't look anywhere close to the original dress that Belle wore in the 1991 original. And it doesn't even come anywhere close. It, it just looks like some shabby costume. Hell, shabby costumes from Halloween at least kept it original. Topical. So, one thing I think I can understand is that, they're, that these actors try to do a good job at at least what they're doing. But they at least need to be a bit more movable. They can't be just lazy. Not only that, they have to at least smile once in a while if they're going to sing. I mean, for Christ's sake, the animated versions at least, like, singed and smiled at the same time. How come in the originals, they don't smile? It's just so weird. It's stupid. And I don't like it that much. I think it just bottles my throat and shoves so much stuff down my throat, it's hard to digest. So, let's just say for the fact that the Disney formula is a horrible formula that should die in a fire and should go back to the original Disney formula that once came before it. Not this one that is going to be shoved in my throat so many times. Because here's the thing, I don't look at these Disney reboots. They suck. Dumbo's going to suck, Lion King's going to suck, Maleficent sucks, and what else is there? Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella, the Snow White, re the Snow White reboots that I have seen in the past. What else is there? I Mary Poppins Returns, I can't even comprehend that one. I have to see the original one to see how good it was. It's, it's the 60s, but I like the old classics. Yes, I know a lot of people would say, oh, the classics are bland. They're not as, like, hip with the crowd. Here's the thing. How about you go listen to your hip-hop music and fuck off? Because if you mess up something like that, it's like taking a test to create something. It's like a test to create a story and give it with some heart and dignity into it. You would, you would actually give an A-plus to something that actually has and imaginative storytelling, and plot points that are good, along with a nice script. Not, And you would give this, this one that has the Disney formula of today the biggest F minus. Well, no, a F infinity minus, because that's an infinity amount of minuses that I cannot comprehend that is completely Disney. 
and yet they carry the Disney logo. It's garbage. It's complete garbage. If anybody likes these reboots, i like more and proud happy to you, but I can't stand the Disney formula, and I flat out cannot stand what Disney is doing in our type of reality. We need good storytelling and stuff, and we need good characters. And actors and actresses as well that play them. If you're going to make a story, at least do it right. And not only are you going to do a damn story, get us interested in the story. If you don't get us interested in the story, we're all just going to take a nap in the theater and waste our time wasting our money when we couldn't abide, like, maybe the, the Operation Scarlet for the Xbox, anyhow, or the PlayStation 5, or maybe, here's the thing, I know a lot of Call of Duty fans are probably going to roast me in the comments here, I don't care, because... I'd rather have Black Ops 4 than Mary Poppins Returns, Maleficent, Dumbo, Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, and, and the other Disney-like reboots that have these titles while listening to the originals on my computer. That is flat out what I would do. I'd play Black Ops 4 while listening to Disney movies, the original classics, because this is a mockery to what Walt has done. Walt Disney has done some nice things that even Disney has basically kept over the years. Problem is, is that some of these other Disney execs want to put so much shit into, the, into this formula. And I'm surprised that 79 critics, critics alone, like this movie of today that flat out mocks the original 1960s classic that Walt and another writer, I don't know her name, but she was the original creator of Mary Poms along with Walt, and just flat out destroyed it. Why do you critics like this? This has nothing to do with the original. The only thing is, is that it looks like the original, except more brightly colored. It's a mess. A flat out being a mess. It's nothing more than just shit. And it's shit that I can't take anymore.